So um, for everyone out there who doesn't quite know what IOTEX is, do you just want to kind of give the short elevator pitch? Uh, sure. Uh, so IOTEX is an auto-scalable and privacy-centric blockchain infrastructure for Internet of Things. So IOTEX is developing several in-house innovations, uh, try to push the frontier of blockchain 3.0. For example, we have this blockchain in blockchain architecture for heterogeneous computing. We have our own uh, consensus mechanism, which is called Road Depots. And we have several lightweight privacy preserving technologies to really boost up the privacy for the blockchain. So basically, IOTEX is trying to bring the machine-to-machine -machine interaction and autonomous device coordination to the math to the masses by con connecting the physical world block by block. We have been very selective about investors. Basically, we want this investor to be like a really long-term, uh, have long-term vision and also align with us on the value side, on the philosophy side. So that's how they can work with us together. Because for example, our investors have some IoT manufacturer resources. They have some uh, resources or uh, even like maybe some uh, with some very big company with uh, the entire industry. For investors like this, we basically, we want to work with them for a long time, not just like get the token, just, just dump it on the market and get a like 10x return, whatever. Uh, so we, we really want this long-term relationship. So that's the philosophy why we want to maybe lock this token for one year at least. We asked people about their background. I didn't even get a chance to. So do you actually want to share a little bit about yourself? How did you even get into this space to begin with? I, I grew up in China and I went to school in Canada. And when I was doing my PhD in uh, lightweight cryptography uh, in Waterloo, I think that's 2008. So actually that's a year, 2009, actually that's a year where the Bitcoin paper came out, right? Like me and also my lab mates, we were diving into the paper trying to attack the scheme at first because it seems like something too good to be true. So that's why like we spent some time on the paper and also we tried to mining and after graduation, uh, I actually joined Google and stayed there for three and a half years as a security engineer. Uh, so mostly my work is about the infrastructure, the networking and the security uh, of, the, uh, of Google infrastructure. And then I moved to Uber. So uh, I, I, moved, I, I moved to Uber so that's I kind of like focus more on the cryptography side. Uh, so that's where I led the team doing most of the crypto, uh, cryptography, R&D. I stayed there for one year, then I met my two also co-founder. Uh, and we start maybe um, planning this for like uh, almost uh, five, four or five months. Then we start uh, decided to start this company last year around August. So that that's about me. Basically, like my background is more about cryptography, more about like a uh, distributed system. Uh, so that's that's more like a technical guy. That's very impressive. I didn't even know all yeah. that actually myself. Um, and you, mm -hmm. you spoke about your co-founders and, and the rest of the team as well. So what makes you so confident with this team that you've been able to build up that you can actually deliver on these promises? Mm -hmm. So basically our team uh, background, they all have a very strong background, but they are, uh, all very di they are all very diversified. Because if like one team is there and you have like all technical guys, then I don't think it will go far with that. So because like our team have different, different uh, DNAs from Facebook, from Google, also from academia. So for example, my, uh, one of my co-founder, he's uh, like a very early employee at, uh, at Facebook, and he really understands how to do a product well and how to grow the community and how to do like uh, how to engage people, engage uh, community and uh, big players. Uh, another example could be uh, our chief crypto officer. Like he's mostly from academic kind of background and he's doing lots of uh, like crypto cryptography plus blockchain plus IoT research. So. He's also has a very strong understanding uh, on the tech side. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why he's leading like the research effort for IOTEX. Uh, on, the, on the engineer side, we also have like engineers from Uber, Facebook, and Google. Like they are all very senior, like a three to five year at least experience on the software industry distributed system. So that's, they, they, that's their, where they can contribute their expertise in building up the blockchain and make it scalable and reliable as well as secure. Uh, another co-founder of us, like uh, Jin, she's from like a VC background. So she has been witness like all the success and failures of uh, Silicon Valley startups. So she really understand how uh, a start startup may fail, right? So that's like she can somehow give us the advice to guide through us um, to the success. So that's also very important role on our team. So one of the things too is that I that I noticed a lot that you guys keep referring is that you're you're saying that the IoT industry essentially is lacking a killer app as you put it, but you don't actually see yourself as that killer app. You'd rather be the platform for that app to be built on top of, essentially, right? 
Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so here's my reasoning. Actually, we think IoT plus blockchain is a great effort, great direction to go down. However, like the blockchain itself has like some like a uh, key features, let's say scalability and privacy. So once we're getting these key uh, features, then we can unlock certain kind of IoT applications on top of that. So for now, it's still too early to see like which one is a killer app, which one is not, right? Because we don't even know like how we implement these features, how would they look like? It's like uh, when you first have uh, internet, we have TCP IP protocol. It's hard to imagine we would have technologies like uh, we were like Airbnb. So I think it's a kind of same an uh, analogy to to this blockchain plus IoT industry. So we are getting there, but it will take some time. So that's why we first uh, focus on the really uh, to enable this key features on the blockchain itself. Absolutely. I mean, the foundation is the mm -hmm. most important thing. I mean, I, it's, it's a stupid example, but when you think about it, you could have the most beautiful house, but if the foundation is crap, you know what I mean? <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the point in all that work that you put in, essentially? I, I, think, it's, I, think, so, that, I think transactions per second does tend to be kind of like a, like a buzzword after a while, because realistically, right. if you're using the, the, the sub-chain as a, as a service, most of those chains are going to be able to accommodate that particular company or enterprise or, or DAP or whatever's purposes. And worst case scenario, you could always just roll out another chain. And then because it's the same, you could just have those be interoperable, right? I mean, essentially, you right. could just keep multiplying it as many times as you need to. So thank, yeah. thank you for clarifying that. That's actually a very realistic answer. You know, most people are like, oh, we're, do we're doing 10 billion transactions. Like, come on, man. Like, you, you know, as soon as you let that network live, it's not going to be able to handle that. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you for being so honest about that. Now, when we talk about these other things, you, you, you were so focused on privacy as well. And this is something that I know I take very seriously. A lot of people take very seriously. I guess for me, like the, I always like to look at the big picture. I'm really into adoption and real world use cases. So it's really great to talk about the tech and talk about the vision and everything else. But mm -hmm. you know, give, give me an example. Let's just fast forward into the future. Give me some real world applications. You spoke a little bit about smart homes and identi identity management. How do you envision mm -hmm. your blockchain being used in the real world? Just like give me an example of a real world use case, you know? Yeah, like the future world will be a robot world and the robot as a service world actually. So you can think every robot, they will interact with the world by using this blockchain because we have to like buy something, do a maintenance, or maybe work with another robot to, to get a task done. So that's, that's our vision. Basically, we want to enable this robot as a service world. Yeah, you know you